Our mothers, when they buy a goat from the market, they will tie it down for two weeks. And after two weeks, they remove the rope. They are so sure the goat will not go. The same goat that was eager to run away from the compound, they have removed the rope. Oh, the goat will still be there. Why? Because even though the physical rope has been removed, but the rope has entered his mentality. Listen to me. If all your life, everywhere you turn to, what you are seeing is poverty, chances are that poverty would have entered you. You cannot imagine greatness. And the way God usually interrupts that small mindset is that God will come to you in a dream and he begins to plant the imagination of the vision of where he's taking you to. You see yourself in a mansion. You come out of your mansion, you see an all kind of sophisticated cars and they hand over a bag full of dollars. And while you are still trying to manage your dollars, somebody just knocked the door and you wake up. You woke up inside a one bedroom apartment. No bed, no chair, no television. And you hear and say, ah! Dreams are foolish. Listen to me. Not all dreams are foolish. Some dreams are God's way of planting the imagination of your future in your mind. So that your mind can begin to embrace greatness. Because as long as you maintain that poor posture in your mentality, you will never become great. Look at me. Do you understand that Satan knows the law of vision much more than we believers? Many of you, you have vowed never to watch pornography again in your life. And Satan edits when you made that vow to God. Then Satan comes to your dream. Then he begins to show you the Assyrians. And they are twerking in front of you. It's as if they are ministering to you. And right there, you woke up from that dream with a terrible sexual hold. You are moving around the street. You feel like hugging anybody. Satan has sown a seed, an imagination to your heart. Because Satan knows that as long as you embrace that imagination, that imagination will direct the course of your life. Not until you manifest, you will not feel better. And that's why Paul said, casting down imagination and every item that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. When you wake up from such a dream, what you do is that with your mouth, you begin to renounce them. The Bible says, have no fellowship with your fruitful work of darkness, but you renounce them. Because see, the only power you have is the power to reject it. As long as that imagination persists, it will control your life. Because your vision will always find expression. Glory to God.